like a mango creamy honey and we can watch for the moon underneath the mango tree me honey and we make hulu loop soon underneath the moonlit sky me honey and i can sit hand in hand underneath the moonlit sky me honey and i can make fairy land mango banana and tangerine sugar anaki and cocoa bean when we get mad we make them grow and night little child in the row oh underneath the mango tree me honey and me can watch for the moon underneath the mango tree me honey and me we plan marry soon oh sugar and aki and cocoa bean when we get married we make them grow and nine little child in the row underneath the mango tree me honey and me can watch for the moon underneath the mango tree me honey and we plan marry soon underneath the mango tree underneath the mango tree underneath the mango tree underneath the mango what tree Welcome. David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. And I mean welcome back to the Ian Fleming Villa. We've of course been here before, but not like this. This in the 70th anniversary of Ian Fleming's Bond novels. We can hear the Bond music playing in the background. I'm holding my favorite Bond novel and I've just walked out of the Fleming Villa after of course being in his bedroom where he did the typing of all of the novels. We've got the view, but more importantly tonight, we're combining a lot of different things. Fans from all around the world, an appreciation of 70 years of novels, discussions, revelry, and most of all, a celebration of everything Ian Fleming. And I couldn't think of a better place than Goldeneye. This event is seven months in the making, where Goldeneye also felt so passionate about this year especially celebrating Ian Fleming. What better way than with Ian Fleming fans, James Bond fans, and now you. So interestingly enough, we're here in the sunken garden and the neat thing about the sunken garden that you may not know is, yes, it's sunken, and he wanted a sunken garden, but when they started to dig, they hit rock, because of course they did. So one of the things they had to do was they had to build up all the land around the sunken garden. And that's how they created it. They built up the land first and then dug. So it's a little bit of an illusion, which is kind of interesting because from a literary standpoint, he's a bit of an illusionist. Of course, lest you think it's just one room or another, this was all about open air. In fact, as you can see, the shutters here open up to the entire bedroom and his desk. He could simply just look out, see the doctor bird, the different sounds of the ocean and receive that same motivation that motivated him when he would take the snorkeling, for example, that we showed you. Yeah, it's all here. Well, of course, this corner needs no introduction. I mean, this is it right here. This is the desk where he wrote books like Dr. No and many others. And yes, folks, this is the famous chair that he sat in. It's very impressive, but there is something that goes on here. And, and I've talked about it almost like an emotional standpoint. There is a certain vibration. There's a certain emotional connection as a Bond fan. When you come into this room and you look at the ceiling and the walls and you see the same views that he would have seen. Something even more transforms though when you sit down in his chair and you get close to his desk, you smell the wood, you touch the wood, and then you regard the book itself. Now, let me talk about the book because here's what we're going to be doing. We have Bond fans from all around the world gathered for this 70th year anniversary, many of them first time here in the 
Fleming Villa. It's going to be super special for them. But I'm going to bring them and have them talk about their favorite Fleming book. Now, mine is Dr. No. And I've got to talk about Dr. No because for me, this is all about fantasy meeting the love letter to Jamaica. There's nothing more descriptive in how Ian Fleming himself felt than when he describes how Bond feels about his experience in Jamaica. The danger, the beauty, the essence, the people, the nature, all of that come together. And then when you throw the different fantasy, what did Fleming say about Dr. No? It's so much easier to write fantasy because you're not constricted by fact. It's all fiction. This particular fiction, it transports me. It sends me on a trip and it takes me out of my humdrum life. And to me, that's what a Bond novel should do. That's what Ian Fleming do. But let's hear it from other people. Oh, Kyle Barbeau from Instagram's Easy Smiles and Expensive Watches here from the Fleming Villa. And this is a very impactful moment for me. I'm sitting in the same chair that Ian Fleming once sat in. And I brought with me my favorite Ian Fleming novel, which is From Russia With Love. I find this one to be the um, most tightly plotted Cold War spy thriller. This is the KGB versus 007. And James Bond doesn't even appear in the first 25% of the book. It's all about the villains plotting and discussing Bond and his habits and his mannerisms and how they're going to try and kill him. It was also one of uh, John F. Kennedy's favorite novels. And it kind of launched the James Bond um, phenomenon in the United States. From Russia with Love. Highly recommend. Hello, everyone. I'm Philip Dewhurst, president of 007 GB, but more importantly, a Bond fan in a special moment. I mean, I'm looking out at the ocean here at GoldenEye in Jamaica, and I'm sat at one of my heroes' desks, Ian Fleming, the very same place he sat and wrote all the novels we love that's created this franchise that just keeps on giving friendships, adventure, excitement. So the book I've brought with me is For Your Eyes Only. And one of the things I love about this book, it's a collection of more than just one Bond tale. And so maybe you've just got half an hour before a flight, something like that. You can just dive right into this and read one of those short stories. And my favorite one is For Your Eyes Only, actually. Um, I love the, the way that M is thinking about would it be right to use a, a British secret agent for his own revenge. And I just think the morality and Bond's sort of questioning that should somebody really kill another human being, uh, I just find it very interesting. Um, and I wondered if in License to Kill the Film, the scene with M, Robert Brown and Timothy Dalton, I wondered if that wasn't inspired by the reverse position where M is the one um, thinking about revenge. And in License to Kill, when they maybe use that and, uh, you know, so it has more than one, one reason that I love it. But to just be here is so special and I can't thank David Zeritsky enough. What a guy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now. Hey, Jay Sadowski here for James Bond Classified. I am sitting at the Ian Fleming desk in the Ian Fleming Villa and I pretty much have goosebumps because all I can think of sitting here is the scent and smell of smoke in a casino is nauseating at 3 a.m. And I'm literally actually getting emotional. Um, yeah, it's a place where James Bond was born. And uh, I brought Moonraker because it's a little bit different from some of the books. It only takes place in England. The bridge game I find fascinating that he's cheating with the Hugo Drax. And I just love the, some people might think it's mundane, but I love Bond at home. I love Bond's everyday stuff. And I just found it a change of pace and just a fantastical story, even though, unlike me, he didn't get the girl. Anyway, Chase Sadowski, James Bond Classified. Before I sign off, can I just say thank you so much to David from the Bond Experience. My heart is heavy right now. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Josh Brown, and uh, I'm here because of the Bond experience and uh, everyone involved here at uh, Ian Fleming's estate. Uh, I brought a book which actually isn't my favorite book. However, it's the Gateway book. And uh, many moons ago, I did a lot of traveling in England, and uh, I was looking for some English literature. I had a lot of time to kill. Went through the Sherlock Holmes books. Uh, thought about, oh yeah, James Bond, I enjoy the movies, let's see what the novels are about. And I went down to Greenwich Village, and there was a mystery shop there, and I asked the guy, I was like, hey, are these actually any good? And he says, yeah, actually, they're fantastic. So this is the one I picked up. Uh, I don't know why I grabbed this, might have been because of the side boob, maybe not. But uh, this was the gateway drug, it was the first chapter, there was a, a motorcycle chase, and it was just so vivid, it just pulled me in, and the reason why I picked this book is because 15, probably 16 years later, I'm at the Fleming Villa with amazing people who I've met throughout this journey, all because of a fictional character, all because of this man, and uh, what a wild ride. Hi, I'm Alex Lamas of Always Say Yes to Adventure. So. Being here in the Fleming Villa, being in this chair, being in this desk is an amazing experience. You feel the vibration of what, was, what happened here. You feel the vibration of Fleming's influence. You feel his energy. The first, this is actually the second time I was here. The first time I was here, it was unbelievable. And I couldn't get out of the chair. I couldn't leave the desk. It was amazing. So being in this place, even now, made me very emotional about what went on here. The first film I ever saw, the first James Bond film I ever saw was Thunderball. And my father showed it to me, and I was blown away by the underwater scenes. I did not know that that was even possible to be able to do something like that. And at the time, my father was also a certified diver. My mother was a certified diver. And my dad took, me to a, took us to a trip to Nassau when I was around eight years old. And we rode around on a motor scooter to all the Bond locations. So he wanted to see Palmyra. He wanted to see the Cafe Mart. We ate at the Cafe Martinique. And we tried to see as many of the Bond locations for, as we could. So it was an amazing to this day, a childhood memory that, you know, just touches my heart. So that's why Thunderball was always a special story, book. And when I read the book, again, it, was, it brought me back to all of that. Hello, everyone. It's Joe, the Bond enthusiast. And uh, I am here at the very famous Ian Fleming desk at GoldenEye in the Fleming Villa. This is an absolutely magical place. And I'm here with the group on a, just an, a wonderful evening, some incredible weather, and it's very warm. And when I think of Fleming and this particular desk, I think of this book right here, Casino Royale, the very first one. And for me, there's something about a first something in a series, whether it's a book, a film series, a television season, the first season, especially something that goes on to be very successful. I always love going back and looking at those first efforts and seeing like how things evolved, what that pilot looked like, what that first book looked like, and what it's kind of turned into over the years. And I find that just to be an amazing look back at the history of everything. And that's why Casino Royale for me is an absolute gem uh, in the Fleming book series. So thank you very much. Take care, everyone. This is Joe the Bond Enthusiast signing off from GoldenEye. Hello, this is Mike Poplowski from The Culture of Bond. I'm here at GoldenEye. What an event. And to be able to walk through this, take pictures, and see the whole deal. Uh, it's like, it's in my imagination. What does it actually look like inside? Now I have a good lay of the land here. It's great. My favorite books, I'm gonna, I could say Casino Royale, the first one. Great story, but no. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Bond's looking for love, he gets married, has a crazy adventure, he's looking for Blofeld, doesn't find Blofeld, and the wife is murdered. He's got to continue on his mission. Great book, and to be, to be continued next. And he set it all up right in these books.
Hi, I'm Chris, uh, or Chris Fortini, for those who don't know me. Um, I am sitting at the Fleming chair probably set for the first time seconds ago. Um, and I've been thinking about what this moment would mean to me for being here. And I won't get too emotional, at least try not to. Um, but I think for me, it's, uh, it's inspirational and aspirational. Um, being in GoldenEye and now being in the villa for the first time and sitting in Ian Fleming's actual chair uh, in front of his, or next to his actual desk, looking out on this view, um, I think it all makes sense. You know, you see all the inspiration, you're living it, you're experiencing it just as he did. And uh, you can understand why everything begins to just start clicking into place. And um, as a result, uh, for the, the book I ended up picking was Casino Royale. Uh, because much like it was the, the book that started it for Fleming with uh, the case of James Bond, it was the, the book and film that started the real, I guess you could say, love affair for James Bond for me. Uh, I was always the casual Bond fan, as probably millions of people are, but for me, this is really what started it all. And uh, it's a full circle moment now, because I'm back where it all started. Hi everyone, I'm Connor Bentley from Conmon 007. And uh, it's just absolutely incredible to be here in Ian Fleming's room at his desk. Um, and I just have to say it's this whole place, you can tell why Fleming came here, it's just gorgeous. Um, I chose the book for me uh, is From Russia With Love because Fleming, when he came here originally to write Casino Royale, he wanted to write the spy novel to end all spy novels. And to me, this is the one. He perfected it with book number five. From Russia With Love just has it all. It's my favorite book. It's my favorite film in the series. I think the story is just great Cold War espionage, and it's Fleming at his best. And that's exactly why I chose it. It's just an absolute page turner, the best thriller in the series. So I'm Chris Robinson, uh, I'm a part of the uh, Operation GoldenEye visit to Ian Fleming's home. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of difficult to say what it feels like to actually be in the home of the, the author who wrote the book that meant a lot to you as a kid. Um, there are several that we have at our home that I love. Every single year I read the same one over and over. Um, I think Live and Let Die is, is my favorite and the reason I say that is because uh, when Fleming's describing the Bow Desert uh, scene when he trains, he gets ready for the mission. Um, as a kid, I was living in the middle of nowhere in the Middle East, and just seeing the, the his vision of the water and of what he did and the mission and how he went alone uh, as a small kid made me feel like, you know, yeah, if you can be confident and and you know strong to get through problems, this is how you do it. And so I was the oldest child. So reading these types of books meant a lot to me. It meant like, you know, before phones and the internet, it was like, uh, this is kind of how you, you know, like take over problems, you deal with nature, and then you become stronger at the end if you survive. So this is absolutely my favorite Ian Fleming book. Hi everyone, it's uh, Bill Bokunik and um, what an amazing event that uh, the Bond experience and David Zeritsky put on for us. Uh, never thought I was going to have the opportunity to, to be in the Fleming estate, the, uh, and he put it together. So thank you, David. Um, and it's been an amazing trip. So my favorite, while I love all the Bond books, my favorite book is Casino Royale for a lot of different reasons. One, it was the first. Um, secondly, uh, it's my favorite Bond movie. And they've stayed fairly close to the story. They, they took some, you know, liberties, but it's an amazing book, an amazing uh, movie, and started the franchise. And um, again, while I love them all, Dr. No, Thunderball, this started it all for me. And, and uh, again, thank you, David. Thank you to the Bond Experience. And uh, I hope everyone gets an opportunity at some point in the future to, to visit this wonderful place. Hi, I'm uh, Kate and um, I'm here at the Fleming Villa in GoldenEye and it's an 
absolutely magical place to be. My favorite Fleming book that I picked to share is um, the collection of short stories because for me they just neatly encapsulate why Fleming is such an incredible writer. They, he makes you care about people and places and he, his level of description in just a few paragraphs is outstanding and it translates into the novels but that's that's what they are for me. Also because you know the the Living Daylights I, I played cello in high school so when I first read that one that was the one that did it for me. <laughs> so <laughs> but that's my pick. <laughs> Thank you. It's about that time, uh, you know, the Fleming Villa, Sophia, everybody here has been great to let us play a little bit here. I got everybody in. It was like a factory. <laughs> Just boom, boom, boom. Somebody said I could be a, a wedding photographer. I, 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 I would need the pay raise, so that would be great. Um, and we did have a few people get emotional, which was really sweet. Lots of hugs. I know how much this means, not just to you, but to me as well. Um, there was a couple things, and I'm almost going to give him credit, it was Kyle, who said that the reason why it was a very heavy moment for him is not just because it's a beautiful environment, it's not just because, literally, in the corner of that bedroom right there is where the man that lit this powder keg called the Bond franchise. I mean, the books that we've read, the movies that we've watched, the, the hobby, the community that we've all created together. No, the biggest thing is that it brought us all together. And seven months ago, when I thought about doing this, a little bit of a transparency moment, I thought, Danielle, it would be great for you and I to go there and do a 70th anniversary. We'll do a couple videos. And then I really thought to myself, the best part about this entire hobby uh, and bond is, uh, is sharing it with my friends. And you guys are so special to me. I mean, I'm honored to know every single one of you and what you've done. And you make my heart soar every single day. And it's because of this, this character that just started there, which is insane. And I know people say he did it, he wrote Casino Royale because of the impending marriage. He probably did it more because he needed the money, but eventually it became his passion as well. It became his child and now it's ours. So we're surrogate parents in everything that we do with Bond. So I want to toast all of you for coming, taking this trek globally and to you. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you. David. Thank you. No, this has been great. And I, I, I've sweated off my entire lunch and breakfast, so... <laughs> yes! The mango... What? Tree! Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.